everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Whatever Happened To, the series where we take a where are they now look at players who found success in the National Hockey League, but are no longer permanent fixtures in the league, either due to controversy, poor play, or just rotten luck. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at a 17-year veteran of the league, and an NHL All-Star. As we ask, whatever happened to Mike Ribeiro? After being selected 45th overall in the second round of the 1998 NHL entry draft by the Montreal Canadiens, Mike Ribeiro spent another year in the QMJHL with the Rowan Naranda Huskies, where he scored 167 points in 69 regular season games and 16 points in 11 playoff games. Once the season ended, Ribeiro would spend the next two years split between the juniors, the AHL, and have a few brief stints in the NHL, where he would score 117 points in 121 total regular season games, and 29 points in 20 total playoff games. Though he had bounced around several different leagues over the last few years, and had struggled to find any consistency in where he was playing, seemingly from one week to the next, Ribeiro would soon get his first real chance to prove he belonged on an NHL roster. The 01-02 season finally saw Ribeiro spend a considerable amount of time in the NHL, as he suited up in 43 games with the Montreal Canadiens, scoring 8 goals and 10 assists for 18 points in that span. However, Ribeiro wouldn't stick on the roster full-time, as he also played for the Habs AHL affiliate, the Quebec Citadels, and scored 23 points in 23 games. Ribeiro also took to the ice with Quebec during the 2002 AHL playoffs, and scored 3 points in 3 games, but the Citadels were eliminated in the first round by the Hamilton Bulldogs. Despite getting his first real chance to play at the NHL level, Ribeiro still hadn't found a way to stay there indefinitely. Through determination, perseverance, and much improved play, Ribeiro wouldn't have to wait much longer to have a permanent place in the best league in the world. The 02-03 season saw Ribeiro begin the year with the Habs' new AHL affiliate, the Hamilton Bulldogs. Talk about irony, right guys? And score just a single point in three games, before being recalled to the Canadiens roster once again. Little did Ribeiro know that this would be the last time he would suit up in the AHL for well over a decade. Ribeiro spent the rest of the season in Montreal and put up similar numbers compared to his stint with the team last season, as he scored 5 goals and 12 assists for 17 points in 52 games. Unfortunately, this production wasn't enough to help Ribeiro make his first appearance in the NHL playoffs, as the Habs missed out on the postseason for the fourth time in five years. Having played in the NHL for the majority of the season, Ribeiro wanted to remain in the league and become a key roster player for the Canadians in the years that followed. And boy would he do that in the upcoming season! The 03-04 season saw Ribeiro finally crack the Canadiens' roster out of training camp and become a key player for Montreal, lighting up the league in his first full season with the team, as the 23-year-old forward scored a whopping 20 goals and 45 assists for 65 points in 81 games. This great production would also help Montreal return to the playoffs for the second time in three seasons, where Ribeiro potted a less impressive 3 points in 11 games, as the Canadians were swept in the second round by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Ribeiro had finally earned a spot on Montreal's roster, and was looking to build on his success from last season to become a star in the National Hockey League. But first, there was a lockout! During the 04-05 lockout season, Ribeiro took his talents overseas to Finland as he signed with the Espoo Blues of the Finnish Liga. However, Ribeiro only played with the team for a portion of the season, as he suited up in only 17 games but scored 17 points. 
The biggest news for Ribeiro during this season, though, was the announcement that he had signed a one-year contract extension with the Canadians on January 18th, 2005, worth $1.178 million for the upcoming season, as his entry-level contract had ended at the conclusion of the season prior. This contract would be the first in a string of cheap one-year deals that Ribeiro would sign over the next few seasons. However, not all of them would be signed as a member of the Canadians. The 05-06 season saw the NHL resume play, and Ribeiro return to the Habs roster. Whilst he would continue to put up decent numbers, Ribeiro would see a slight dip in his production compared to his last season in the league, as he scored 16 goals and 35 assists for 51 points in 79 games during his sophomore season in the league. This production would help Montreal return to the playoffs once more, where Ribeiro potted two points in six games, but the Habs were eliminated in the first round by the Carolina Hurricanes. Once the season had ended and his one-year deal had been fulfilled, Ribeiro was in need of another contract. So, on July 6th, 2006, the Habs signed him to another one-year contract, this time worth $1.9 million. Considering he had scored 116 points in his last 160 NHL games, signing this former second round pick for under $2 million was a downright steal for the Habs. However, before his new contract could kick in, Ribeiro would no longer be a member of the Montreal Canadiens. Just before the season began, on September 30th, 2006, it was announced that Ribeiro had been traded, along with a 2008 sixth round pick, to the Dallas Stars, in exchange for Jan Nanima and a 2007 fifth round pick. Just like that, Ribeiro was heading beyond the Canadian border for the first time in his career, to suit up for the league's Texan franchise. This trade would end up working wonders for both Ribeiro and the Stars, as the Canadian forward would establish himself as a top player in the league during the following seasons. The 06-07 NHL season saw Ribeiro suit up for the Stars for the first time and continue to put up similar season numbers to his last few years in Montreal, as the former second round pick scored 18 goals and 41 assists for 59 points in 81 games. This production helped Dallas make the playoffs for the fourth straight year, where Ribeiro potted three points in seven games, as the Stars were eliminated in the first round by the Vancouver Canucks. After his second straight one-year contract was complete, and having scored at least 50 points for a third straight season, Ribeiro was understandably looking for a pay rise. So, on July 12, 2007, he signed his third straight one-year contract, this time worth $2.8 million with the Dallas Stars. Luckily for Dallas, Ribeiro's production in the season following would make this contract the steal of the year. The 07-08 NHL season saw Ribeiro have the best season of his entire NHL career, as the 27-year-old forward scored an incredible 27 goals and 56 assists for 83 points in 76 games in just his second season with the Stars. This outstanding production would earn Ribeiro his first and only place at the NHL All-Star Game, as one of the best players in the Western Conference that year. Ribeiro's career year would in turn help Dallas return to the playoffs once more, where Ribeiro also had the best playoff performance of his career too, with 17 points in 18 games, but the Stars were eliminated in the conference finals by the Detroit Red Wings. Midway through the season, whilst he was still playing on his one-year contract and tearing up the league, Ribeiro wanted to capitalise on his newfound success and finally commit to a long-term deal. So, on January 7th, 2008, he signed a five-year, $25 million contract extension with the Stars worth an average annual value of $5 million a season. After several years of cheap, short-term deals, 
Ribeiro was finally being paid like a player of his calibre should be. Whilst he would never quite reach the same heights in the years that followed, Ribeiro would remain one of the star's best players. The 08-09 NHL season saw Ribeiro continue to put up great numbers for the stars, but saw an ever so slight dip in his production compared to last season, as he notched 22 goals and 56 assists for 78 points in 82 games. Though he continued to light the lamp almost every game, this production wasn't enough to help the Stars return to the playoffs, as Dallas missed out on the postseason for the first time in seven years. Though this was the first time Ribeiro missed the playoffs as a member of the Stars, it certainly wasn't going to be his last. The 09-10 NHL season saw Ribeiro's numbers take a pretty noticeable hit, but this was primarily due to the forward playing less games compared to his past two seasons, as he scored 19 goals and 34 assists for 53 points in just 66 games. Unfortunately, these reduced numbers would play their part in Dallas missing out on the playoffs for the second straight season. The 10-11 NHL season saw a much healthier Ribeiro return to his production of seasons past with the Stars, as the former second round pick potted 19 goals and 52 assists for 71 points in 82 games. Unfortunately though, Dallas would remain unable to clinch a postseason berth as the Stars missed out on the playoffs yet again. The 11-12 NHL season saw Ribeiro miss several games due to injury, and as a result, his numbers took a slight hit once more. That said, he still put up very strong stats, as the Canadian forward scored 18 goals and 45 assists for 63 points in 74 games. However, Dallas would be stuck watching the playoffs on TV yet again, as the team missed the postseason for the fourth straight year. Despite his dominance in Texas over the past half a decade, Dallas were unable to build a legitimate cup contending team, which resulted in the Stars missing the playoffs in four of Ribeiro's five years on the roster. This continued disappointment prompted Dallas to make some changes and shake up the roster by moving on from several key players on the team. Unfortunately for Ribeiro, he would be one of the casualties. On June 22, 2012, it was announced that Mike Ribeiro's time in Dallas was at an end, as he was traded to the Washington Capitals in exchange for Cody Eakin and a 2012 second round pick. Having been traded for the second and final time in his career, Ribeiro was moving to his third NHL team and getting ready to play for the franchise in America's capital. But first, there was a lockout. During the 12-13 lockout, Ribeiro, who was now 32 years old, decided not to sign elsewhere in the world with another professional hockey team, and instead used his newfound spare time to get himself ready for when the NHL resumed play. Not exactly the most interesting adventure during the lockout, but I don't blame him to be honest. He'd been one of the league's best players for just under a decade, so why not take some rest? After all, you don't know when you're going to get another chance to do so, do ya? Once the NHL season eventually began, Ribeiro suited up for Washington for the first time and had a pretty impressive year with the team, going over a point per game for just the second time in his NHL career, as he scored 13 goals and 36 assists for 49 points in 48 games during the lockout-shortened season. This production was good enough to help Washington make it to the playoffs, where Ribeiro potted a less impressive two points in seven games, as the Capitals were eliminated in the first round by the New York Rangers. After his five-year contract he had signed back with Dallas had ended, and having continued to put up great numbers in the league as he entered his mid-30s, Ribeiro was looking to get paid, and paid well once more. So, on July 5th, 2013, he signed a four-year, $22 million contract with the Phoenix Coyotes, worth an average annual value of $5.5 million a season. Though he had just signed his second straight highly paid contract, 
Ribeiro wouldn't see this contract to its conclusion. The 13-14 NHL season saw Ribeiro suit up for the Coyotes for the first time and have his worst offensive season, arguably, since his first few years in the league with Montreal. However, he still put up decent numbers, as the former second round pick scored 16 goals and 31 assists for 47 points in 80 games. This reduced production compared to seasons prior wasn't enough to help the Coyotes clinch a playoff berth, meaning Ribeiro had missed out on the postseason for the fifth time in six seasons. However, missing the playoffs would be the least of Ribeiro's worries. After his first season with the Coyotes had ended, on June 27th, 2014, it was announced that Phoenix had decided to buy out the final four years of Ribeiro's contract. This decision was made by Coyote's general manager at the time, Don Maloney, due to Ribeiro's troubling behaviour issues related to the use of alcohol. In fact, Ribeiro had supposedly been battling with alcoholism and indulging in excessive partying since he initially broke into the league, and was said to have even struggled with alcohol before making it to the NHL, going as far back as when he was 15 years old. Ribeiro's continued struggles against his demons seem to be pretty well known by members of the league as well as fans, and these vices would certainly play a huge role in shaping the latter stages and the conclusion of his career. What is so strange about all of this though, is that despite Ribeiro drinking and partying throughout his career, he continued to put up solid numbers in the league. He is a rather unique case, since vices like these are expected to, and often do, negatively impact a player's performance. Yet Ribeiro, though having his ups and downs in production like most players, was still almost a point per game for much of his career while still addicted to alcohol. It just goes to show how talented of a player Ribeiro was to be so dominant in the league despite his clear off-ice issues. Unfortunately, this isn't the only troubling situation Ribeiro has been involved in during his NHL career, as the Canadian forward was also taken to court in 2012 by a former nanny for alleged sexual assault charges. However, this case was closed via an agreed settlement by both parties through mediation in 2015. It's safe to say that whilst Ribeiro was dominant on the ice, his substance abuse which supposedly often went beyond just alcohol, according to this article by the Toronto Sun, and his excessive partying was too much drama and bad press for the Coyotes to handle. So, they cut ties with him. Having been released from his contract, Ribeiro decided that it was time to do something about his addictions. So, he voluntarily entered himself into the NHL's substance abuse program. After discussing it at length, with Coyote's head coach and former Stars head coach Dave Tippett. Ribeiro remained in the rehab centre for a few weeks and complied with the programme before he was deemed okay to leave. After leaving the programme and having unexpectedly become an unrestricted free agent, Ribeiro was looking for a team to look past his off-ice issues and take a chance on him. Luckily for him, a team came knocking as on July 15th, 2014, he signed a one-year contract worth just over a million dollars with the Nashville Predators. Just like that, Ribeiro was suiting up for his fourth NHL team in four seasons and the fifth team of his career, with the hopes of getting both his on-ice play and his life off the ice back on track. The 14-15 NHL season saw Ribeiro suit up for the Predators for the first time and put up solid numbers with the team, as the 34-year-old forward scored 15 goals and 47 assists for 62 points in 82 games. This production was good enough to help Nashville make the playoffs, where Ribeiro kept up his scoring pace by notching 5 points in 6 games, but the Predators were eliminated in the first round by the Chicago Blackhawks. After his one-year contract had ended, and having proven that he could still be an effective point producer in the league, Ribeiro had earned himself an extension with the Predators. As on July 1st, 2015, 
he signed a two-year, $7 million contract with the team, worth an average annual value of $3.5 million a season. However, things would go downhill fast for Ribeiro before his contract's conclusion. The 15-16 NHL season saw Ribeiro back with Nashville and put up good numbers with the team once more, as the former second-round pick potted 7 goals and 43 assists for 50 points in 81 games. This production would help Nashville return to the playoffs for the third straight season, where Ribeiro scored a less impressive 2 points in 12 games, as the Predators were eliminated in the second round by the Vancouver Canucks. Though his production was getting a little shaky, at 35 years old, Ribeiro remained a solid offensive threat in the league. However, his career in the best league in the world was soon to come to an end. The 16-17 NHL season saw Ribeiro somewhat struggle to start the season, as he only scored 4 goals and 21 assists for 25 points in 46 games. However, on February 2nd, 2017, after failing to score many goals for the team, Ribeiro was placed on waivers, and after going unclaimed, he was assigned to Nashville's AHL affiliate, the Milwaukee Admirals. Some reports suggest that this move was also made due to Ribeiro relapsing back into his alcoholism once again, even though he had continued to work with the league's substance abuse program in the years following his treatment. Despite contemplating retirement from playing professional hockey after being sent down to the A, Ribeiro decided to honour his contract with the team that gave him a chance to continue playing several years ago and play out the rest of the season in Milwaukee, where he scored 26 points in 28 regular season games and 3 points in 3 playoff games. However, this is the last professional hockey Mike Ribeiro would play in his career. Since the 16-17 season, information regarding Ribeiro is limited. My research has found that things seem to have gone from bad to worse for the Canadian forward. According to multiple news sources, Ribeiro's agent, Rob Perno has told media outlets that Ribeiro had relapsed back into his alcoholism several times during the 16-17 season, going back as early as Christmas 2016 and then again in May of 2017. He also said that Ribeiro had seemingly gone radio silent, as he has cut off contact with anyone other than his family, and that the forward hadn't put on a pair of skates since the 16-17 season had ended. The situation was made even worse when news came out in November of 2017 that Ribeiro had been arrested the month prior for trespassing onto a property in Miami further showcasing that he continues to battle the demons inside of him that have plagued him for well over half of his life now. Unfortunately, since his arrest in late 2017, my research has found little information regarding where Ribeiro is now and what he is doing with himself, as he has kept well away from the public eye. Whether you liked him as a player or not, Hearing about how quickly such a talented player like him has spiralled out of control is just sad to see. But regardless of what took place off the ice and how his career ended, there is no doubt that Mike Ribeiro has had plenty of success in the National Hockey League. In 1,074 NHL regular season games, Ribeiro scored 228 goals and 565 assists for 793 points, as well as scoring 34 points in 67 NHL playoff games. Though Ribeiro hasn't officially retired from the NHL just yet, considering he hasn't suited up in the league in over two years, as well as his current age and circumstances, his career in the best league in the world is almost certainly done. It's a shame that things have ended this way for Ribeiro, because he had such a successful career but stories like these really do highlight that you can be on the top of the world in your career and enjoy great success in one area, but everything else in your life could be at rock bottom. And there you go. That's what happened to Mike Ribeiro. What do you think about Ribeiro's career? Was it good? 
bad, or do you wish he was still playing in the league or getting the help he so desperately needs? Also, is there another player you would like me to look at as part of this series? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Andy, Chris Gadsby, David, Kalesbro, Martin Tolness, Matt DeWild, Max Artis, and Nat Marlow, as well as a huge thank you to Cam Montgomery and Ryan Todd for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.